Brilliant. Um, thank you very much, Sam. Uh, I want to talk about three things and then give a shameless plug to uh, the project that I'm working on at the moment. So hopefully you'll bear with me. But first, the, the three things. So firstly, just the framework that the UK has established to deal with climate change. Secondly, how we're delivering on that framework. And thirdly, uh, two big issues that have emerged over the last uh, two or three years, probably longer than that actually, and how they've impacted on the policy debate within the UK. And then the shameless plug. So um, firstly, just the legal framework uh, that we're working within. Um, this may be very, very obvious for a lot of people in the room uh, and some people online, but we had a Climate Change Act that was signed into law in 2008 that sets out a very, very clear legal framework for what we're going to do about emissions reductions in the UK. It sets us long-term targets. It also sets us uh, intermediary uh, staging posts because we know that uh, the short term <coughs> often brings other political um, issues to the fore and having one long-term target isn't really enough. And it also has a clear account accountability framework that sets up uh, an independent body that advises the government uh, on uh, what we should be doing, but also our progress uh, and an ability to inform both Parliament and society about how we're doing. So the Climate Change Act uh, came into law in 2008. It received support from all of the major political parties and the department where I work, which was set up uh, very, very shortly uh, after or before I was actually uh, out of the country when it happened, so the, the memory of it is slightly hazy, um, is responsible for delivering on this. So our Secretary of State for the Department of Energy and Climate Change is legally responsible for the UK delivering on these targets. So what do they, what do they look like in a bit more detail? <coughs> well, we have a long-term target of an 80% emissions reduction uh, for all greenhouse gas emissions compared with 1990 levels by 2050. So uh, we think it's a good target because it's an absolute target. Um, it is in line with what climate science is suggesting that a developed economy like the UK should be offering in terms of mitigation. Um, but probably the innovative thing about the Climate Change Act, in addition to setting this long-term ambition, was this concept of carbon budgets. And you can see, hopefully, from the graph uh, up here, that we've already set the first four carbon budgets. And the concept of a carbon budget is over a five year period, we need to be on average below what we have set the limit there to be. And we've made it five years because we know within the UK that climate variations can often mean that a cold winter sometimes uh, leads our emissions to peak, um, or that something like uh, a an economic recession or boom can play around a bit with the average. So the important thing is over a five year period, are we on track? And you can see here from the graph that um, by 2028, the end of the fourth carbon budget period, we're looking for a 50% reduction. So there's this uh, balance between taking action in the short term, which is very, very important, but retaining this idea that we have a long term goal of 80% and knowing what the staging posts <coughs> towards that should be. So it's, it's not enough to kind of wait until 2040, cross your fingers, and then take lots of action very, very quickly. We know that we need to do some steady work there. And just uh, above, uh, above the graph there, we've got this concept of the three areas that we'll be looking on. So at the moment, we're in the complete and prepare phase. That looks to focus on the low-hanging fruit. Can we do a lot of the energy efficiency work that has already been underway? Um, and can we prepare the ground for the more innovative technologies that aren't quite mainstream yet, but we know that we're going to need? So can we prepare the grid for more renewables? Can we prepare the incentives for having low carbon heating systems in the UK? Can we prepare the uh, setup for electric vehicles? Mass deployment is going to come towards the, uh, the, begin uh, the beginning of the third carbon budget and the fourth carbon budget. So that's when we really need to roll out things like renewables, <coughs> roll out renewable heat, um, and roll out low carbon transport. And then finally, when we get out to 2030, 2040, it will be the really, really hard to treat areas, uh, like the harder areas of transport, aviation, shipping, um, where we'll be looking to, to finalize our work. And you can see that the, uh, the fourth carbon budget, 50% reduction, comes quite, uh, quite early in the process. That might be surprising for, for some people. Um, how are we doing? 
Um, so we've got real data. We're on track for the first carbon budget. Um, you can see there in red, uh, that's actual emissions data from our annual inventory. Uh, and we're expecting the data to come through for 2012 relatively shortly, and we're confident that we're going to be on target there. So we've delivered on the first carbon budget, but it's probably the easiest one. We're expecting to deliver on the second and third, and at the moment we know that we've got a bit of a policy shortfall for this fourth carbon budget and the 50% emissions reduction. But so far, so good, and we've got an idea of where we need to do, do further work. So uh, that's just the structure and how we're doing. Um, finally, two important things to consider just in the political context at the moment. Um, one is the impact of all of this on energy prices. One of um, the UK's biggest uh, emitting sectors is the energy sector. So one of the areas where we need to do the most work is beginning to change that and make it low carbon. Um, we, doing analysis within the Department of Energy and Climate Change, uh, we believe that energy bill prices uh, in 2020 will be higher than they are now, irrespective of action to deal with climate change. Uh, steps to modernise the grid, and also we expect fossil fuel prices to rise in the future, will mean that we expect energy prices to be higher. And it's a bit of a complicated slide here, but what we effectively are looking to communicate to the public are the impact of our policies. So there are some policies that are going to enable us to uh, reduce the cost on energy bills, uh, mostly energy efficiency. You can see one of the big things there is products policy, more efficient TVs, fridges, freezers, that we're working with the European Union to deliver on. But on the right-hand side, the, the pinky ready bar, uh, some of this is going to add to energy bills. Um, and th that's the investment in renewables, um, in uh, uh, the, carbon, uh, the effect of the carbon price. But what we're expecting is that the balance will be positive uh, in terms of trying to uh, mitigate this tendency for rising energy across the cost of the whole of the economy. Um, but this is something that's quite difficult to communicate in public. Um, and you'll, many of you will have seen that uh, in, over the last couple of weeks, uh, there have been quite, quite big energy rises. Um, and so it's, it's a, uh, a big public debate. And it's, uh, it's, we're beginning to see the, the impact on the public of, uh, of this, this agenda. So it's, it's something that is very much in the forefront uh, of our minds. And it's something where we need to keep the public uh, with us on this, because uh, otherwise the political mandate to continue with this um, uh, could be under threat. And secondly, probably a more positive story, the contribution of all of this work and this agenda to economic growth. Um, just one fact for you, investment in energy uh, as a stimulus to the economy is the UK's biggest infrastructure, uh, infrastructure opportunity. There's a bigger pipeline of projects in the energy sector than transport, broadband, water and waste combined. So this is a huge opportunity for enabling us to kickstart the recovery. And that's a very, very important message to, to get out there. Uh, these aren't, uh, this is my quote. This is from uh, the CBI, the UK's uh, premier business uh, organization, from their report, The Color of Growth. Uh, the green sector now represents uh, 122 billion uh, for the UK, and that's of a global market worth 3.3 trillion. And it's providing around a million jobs in the UK at the moment. So again, a good news story there. That's the green sector, clarify, not the energy sector. Yeah, that's uh, all, all defined as the green sector by the CBI. <coughs> um, and interestingly, one third of the UK's econo uh, economic growth in the last financial year is likely to have come from this sector. So it's one of the sectors that has helped the UK begin to lead its uh, economic recovery. Uh, so another, um, another important thing to, to bear in mind uh, as some of the uh, some of the things that are going on uh, in the background to, to all of this work to deliver on these targets. Um, so I just wanted to end on a shameless plug for the piece of work that I'm working on at the moment. Um, and one of the things that uh, is very very important, probably hopefully it's come through, is the the relationship between short term actions and the long term. And the team that I work with within the UK government uh, and within DEC is very, very much focused on making sure that what we're doing in the short term adds up uh, according to our long-term plans. And we've developed something called the 2050 Calculator, which uh, is open sourced and available to download on, uh, online. And I'm spelling it wrong, so it's not going to come up. Uh, and the idea of this is to enable the public, but also stakeholders, to interrogate what the UK is doing. 
there we are. Um, so what we've got is uh, all of the options that are available to the UK uh, to enable us to mitigate greenhouse gases, energy demand, energy supply, uh, and the consequent impact on greenhouse gases. And what you're able to do is begin to construct pathways. Um, and you can see the impact on what that means, both in terms of where you're getting your energy from, uh, but also what it means in terms of greenhouse gases. This is something that Friends of the Earth put together as their vision for the UK in 2050. Uh, and the UK government has come up with our own uh, four scenarios of broadly what we think viable options are for us. So this is one that uh, prioritises renewables over, um, over other sources of energy. We have a, a pathway that looks at a uh, higher nuclear scenario um, and lots of other things that provide for combinations between transport, energy efficiency. And what we've been able to glean from this have been common messages for us. So we know that there are many, many different options that will enable us to d deliver on this 80% target. But the important thing is to think about how did, um, uh, what are the common things between them? What are the no regret options that we should just begin to do now? And what happens if a particular technology either is uneconomic um, or for various reasons doesn't work? So in your nuclear scenario, what happens if uh, for whatever reason you're not able to take forward that particular technology? What does it mean in terms of your emissions? What does it mean in terms of your energy shortfall? Um, and we think this is a particularly useful tool uh, to the extent that we've begun to share it with other countries. So we have a version of the tool for China. Um, it looks uh, roughly, uh, roughly the same, but the numbers are obviously huge. Um, and they have begun <coughs> to put together their own example pathways. Uh, it's available in Mandarin as well. Um, and the team I'm working with at the moment is looking to work with uh, 10 emerging economies to uh, replicate this, this work again. And uh, hopefully it might be interesting for uh, Dr. Rahman that we're working with Bangladesh on a, on a similar version. Yeah, Ed, thank you very much. Very exciting to see. Thank you for your shameless plug because I think it's a fascinating tool and it's great that it's, its potential use beyond the UK is already underway. Um,